Conti today is Encik Muhammad Diaudin, a lecturer from Faculty of Information Technology and Multimedia Communication. Saya Kun Encik Diaudin. Assalamualaikum Welcome back ya, to iRadio. And now uh, we already come to our last, last session, yes. okay, for IT, IT Hour. hour. Hmm. Okay, today uh, we are going to discuss about the future of software engineering. Yep. Okay, before we go further about hmm. Uh, the future of uh, software engineering. engineering. Let's uh, go back, okay? Mm. As we see in 1975, mm. Frederick Brook wrote a classic book, a software development methodology called the Waterfall Model. Yes. Can you please share with us what is the Waterfall Model? Okay, basically the idea of uh, introducing this Waterfall Model is to apply the uh, mature engineering disciplines from mechanical, civil, etc to the development of software so by starting with gathering requirements uh, design doing uh, the construction test and then uh, get it uh, delivered to the to the to the intended recipient so same goes to waterfall it's about conventional or sequential way of uh, developing uh, software without uh, overlapping with, with, uh, between each other so we need to complete uh, a prior phase before moving to the next phase Um, one survey, uh, as stated by uh, Niall in 2003, said that uh, around 35% of companies are still applying uh, waterfall model to develop their their software. Because why? Because it's simple and no, not so much hassle to to apply it. So basically, uh, if you are talking about waterfall model, you are talking about uh, several phases which must be completed first before moving to the next phase. Uh, we should start with a concept definition and then. After that, we move to requirements, specification, then move to uh, design, uh, codes, uh, test, and then uh, deliver. And all the all along the way, when uh, de- delivering to the user, we are going to do some uh, maintenance activities. That's I mean, um, that's uh, a bit about the the, the, waterfall, the, the waterfall, waterfall model, model mm. uh, as mentioned by uh, Frederick Brooks in his book. Okay, after this, we are going to take a look more about waterfall model. So stay around on IT Hour only on Radio UM. From being inspired, be entertained only on Radio UM. Running across your mind. Thank you so much for still. Listening to our radio OUM, and now you are tuning in to our IT hour. Okay, still with me in our radio county is Encik Muhammad Diaudin, a lecturer from Faculty of Information Technology and Multimedia Communication. Okay, Encik Diaudin, yep. we have come a long way since then and learned a lot about making software. Okay. okay, the waterfall model is now considered a flow method because it's so rigid and unrealistic. Okay, in your point of view, why do waterfall model fail? Okay, uh, first we need to understand that uh, most uh, people who I mean uh, not non technical people uh, think that software is uh, is a soft thing, so it's easy to change. Uh, so there is no need to I mean to unplug the nuts or whatsoever like other uh, I mean hardcore engineering. But in reality, is more or less the same like um, typical uh, engineering uh, because uh, software is uh, is uh, it's like a medical system we have a proper design proper structure so it's not as soft as it's as simple as that so talking about the um, waterfall model since um, you are dealing with um, uh, rapid changes of business requirement uh, people want to change this and this to the software so waterfall cannot suit to that kind of uh, scenario or circumstances because um, by apply if we apply a uh, waterfall model it would take uh, longer times and um, because uh, there are lots of things a l- that a lot of need things to need to be to be uh, go uh, need to go through and then um, it's costly when it takes longer time meaning is uh, it takes uh, more cost and uh, of course uh, waterfall cannot deal too much on the uh, frequent change of requirement so that's why we we I mean uh, within the software engineering community we think waterfall although some some uh, companies are practicing it but it's not really 
practical. Uh, practical for the current trends of uh, business who require software to be delivered fast and then meet their their needs. Mm. That's why we uh, I think uh, that's w- why w- people uh, waterfall needs uh, uh, waterfall is not really practical. Mm. Mm. Okay, the new trends of software engineering uh, is agile software. Okay, yep. mm-hmm. after this, uh, we are going to talk more about the methods yeah. of agile. agile software. So yep. stay around on our radio UM. Now you are still tuned in to IT Hour with our topic today, the future of software engineering. Now we are back with Encik Muhammad Diaudin, a lecturer from Faculty of Information Technology and Multimedia Communication. Okay, in early 90s, we saw a number of agile software development methods emerge. Can you please share with us more about the development method of agile software? As opposed to agile, uh, uh, sorry, as opposed to waterfall, why we, uh, why uh, there's an introduction of agile because um, software development needs to to undergo a major rethinking where we need to change and respond quickly to the to the different uh, business needs, which requires uh, frequent changes of requirements, and uh, at the same time we need to focus on simplicity on developing uh, software. So when we talk about agile, it's about group of uh, software development methodologies based on incremental and iterative uh, development, where uh, requirements and solution evolve uh, through collaboration between self-organizing um, cross fun- and uh, cross-functional teams. So it's a it's a kind of adaptive planning, uh, evolution, the development, and also uh, uh, fast uh, delivery to the to the user. So. Popular term we call in Agile is a Agile Manifesto where we talk about individuals and interaction over process and tools, uh, working software over uh, comprehensive documentation, uh, customer collaboration over contract negotiation and also responding to change over uh, rigidly following a plan. So under this kind of uh, Agile Manifesto, there are 12 principles, um, uh, customer satisfaction, uh, welcoming uh, changing of requirements, uh, deliver soft working software frequently. Uh, uh, working software is the principle of measure of progress, sustainable sustainable development, uh, daily cooperation, face to face conversation. Uh, projects are built around uh, motivated individuals, uh, continuous attention to uh, excellence, simplicity, self organizing, and also regular adaptation to the changing uh, of uh, requirements or scenario of the business. So. Uh, some some things that are popular within the agile community is about uh, code refactoring where we uh, try to improve the design of code without changing how it works so if we can write uh, five lines of code rather uh, other than tens we write five lines of code but still doing the same thing other than that is about uh, unit testing and continuous integration where developer need to stress on doing testing at their own level and uh, continuously integrate with um, uh, their counterparts, their partners, uh, codes, so that it uh, the the uh, quality of the codes is uh, is better. So that's are uh, that de- that's are the things that uh, usually we talk about when we discuss about uh, agile, code refactoring, uh, continuous integration, uh, unit testing, and uh, test driven development, and so on. That's uh, uh, a bit on uh, agile. Mm, mm. That was a bit about Agile software. Mm. Okay, after this, we are move on to the main train of evolution of software development. What it is, we will discuss more after this. So stay around on our radio UM. Okay, Cik Daudin, now yeah. let's uh, go back to our topic today, the future of software engineering. engineering. Okay, um, now we see there are three main trend, uh, trend mm. in the evolution of software development, which mm. are cloud, model-driven development and app store. Okay. Uh, what do you think about this movement okay. and what uh, we will see? about this uh, main trend in software mm. development in the future. Okay. First on cloud. Mm. So we need to understand that cloud is uh, is a common term that uh, have been used nowadays but it actually is still a broad term. 
the main essence of cloud is actually um, the abstraction from the infrastructure or the we try to hide it from the technical implementation like we, we used to call it as a software as a service or platform as a service um, examples like uh, Google Apps uh, where we can uh, store our email documents uh, spreadsheets in that uh, in that Google Apps like we have Google Docs and so forth um, so from a software development perspective uh, I could see that cloud is a way to automate the de deployment phase of software development so once you have developed a software so you just put it in the cloud uh, storage and then those who are uh, giving uh, given access to access it should be able to use it so maybe in the future we can see the development tools like um, uh, what uh, Dreamweaver or any kind of like Eclipse we, we just use at in the, at the cloud and uh, develop the software no need to install in our machine that on cloud on the MDD or model uh, driven development uh, is actually um, uh, a higher level of uh, pr uh, productive uh, approach of uh, de de developing a software where where we talk about abstraction on uh, on the programming language like using uh, Ruby on Rails and uh, this is actually a powerful one if we combine it with the cloud because uh, MDD is a way to automate uh, uh, development of a software by cloud is the automation of deployment of the software so when we ha we have that we can provide what so what we call as a platform and service uh, that's the combination of MDD and uh, cloud uh, when we talk about App Store of course we know uh, it's a success successful um, uh, uh, thing since we, we can download um, application for our iPhone iPod and also iPad but we also should understand that um, App Store can play an important role when we combine when we combine it with the with the MDD and also with the cloud. So we we able to download and share some things of like files and uh, into the MDD environment, and then combine with the cloud. Uh, we we uh, we have an opportunity to to search for for other kind of application. So in the in the future. You don't need to download uh, a model, a, a demo model, and execute it. But you just connect to the to the internet, uh, the cloud, maybe through the app store, mm. and then uh, develop the software from from there. Uh, that's uh, how I would see, or how we would see, uh, from the perspective of our software engineering community, how this uh, these three uh, trends can uh, can change the way we develop our software in the future. Mm. Uh, although it has started, but maybe it's not. Uh, it's, it's still not, new. I uh, still new, but I would see that as the new trends of developing uh, powerful application in in the future. Mm. Mm. Okay, after this, we are going to talk about the scenario, the future development of mm. software engineering mm. in, in Malaysia. Malaysia. Mm -hmm. So stay around on our radio UM and enjoy with this number. Okay, Cik Daudin. Now, uh, let's continue with our topic today on the future of software engineering. Okay, just now we already discussed about the agile trends, software, yeah. software, about the, the, trends. The, um, the main the trend trends. in software development. Mm. And now, let's take a look on our country scenario. Yeah. Okay, based on your, on your experiences mm -hmm. as a software engineer, mm -hmm. okay, what do you think about the development of software engineering in Malaysia so far? Okay, uh, for the past, I mean, three to four years, um, I mean, from my uh, my involvement in industry and now into academic, uh, I would say uh, software engineering uh, is rapidly progressing since we can see um, more and more jobs related to software engineering um, are being created and are being published, advertised in the uh, job market, in job street, job GB and so forth. We can see uh, more uh, vacancies in that, in that, uh, in that post. And uh, I think I could see more and more companies, especially IT companies, are uh, um, heavily recognizing the importance of uh, practicing uh, uh, software engineering in the correct way, in the right, in the right, in the correct way, in the right approach. Uh, that how we see it from the company's perspective. And not not just that that companies also uh, start uh, have started to explore other area in software engineering which has which uh, have been omitted before 
like uh, testing uh, software quality uh, processor software processors and uh, applying new methodology like agile and uh, i think uh, software engineering uh, area also can can have more opportunities to explore and tap into in i mean in different domain in different uh, businesses uh, we are like uh, more things to to explore in the financial perspective uh, financial sector in uh, manufacturing automotive and uh, also we should not forget that as more opportunities out there there's there's also challenges that we had need to face uh, uh, I mean uh, to face by the software engineers especially with the current trends in uh, software engineering uh, uh, right, right now uh, new demands new things to do new apps to serve for different kind of markets different customers and at the same time there's also a um, non-profit uh, movement uh, we, uh, we call them uh, we call them as a Malaysian software engineering interest group uh, independent uh, group which uh, actively promoting uh, software engineering knowledge and practices so they also serve as a platform for the software engineer to share knowledge, ideas and experience related to software engineering issues. So despite the, the formal movement on serving different markets, there's also a non-profit movement to, to jive into, into the current trends of uh, adapting software, software engineering to the business needs. Mm. So that's, uh, I, would, I would say, on the current uh, scenario of uh, software engineering in our country. Mm. Mm. Okay, after this, we are going to take a look on the current trend of mobile apps, apps in Malaysia. Mm-hmm. So, stay around on RDO UM. We are back again in IT Hour and now you are still listening with our topic today on the future of software uh, engineering. engineering okay uh, just now Jake Diaudin already shared with us about his experiences as software engineer mm-hmm. and his talk about the development of software engineering in Malaysia okay now let's take a look on the current trend of software engineering in Malaysia okay nowadays we see most company in Malaysia are moving toward mobile, mobile apps, apps mm. as uh, they part of marketing tools mm. okay in your point of view how does it will affect the development of software engineering in this country okay um, from my perspective there are several areas of concern that uh, we may observe with this this, uh, this kind of uh, trends on mobile apps of course uh, the demand for mobile apps is high then it will create new jobs to cater for this de- uh, demand so more job opportunities related to mobile development will be there and since I mean most IT companies are going for, for that to, to cater for this demand and then of course there will be tougher competition between these to produce better and better mobile apps too, to I mean to tackle their customer needs their clients needs and at the same time as we are de- developing uh, these uh, mobile apps so it requires fast uh, fast development faster testing faster deployment to uh, the clients so there's there's also increasing needs to ensure that these apps is of high quality so not just uh, the app itself but also the quality of contents provided by the the, the particular apps and also as a as software engineer to 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 adapt to this change on the mobile apps of course they have their, their, their big responsibility to ensure that these apps developed is uh, are reliable easy to use um, robust enough to be ported on different platform meaning if you have developed for ios you should be able to have apps for android as well and or uh, windows phone so especially when we deal with um, uh, criticality of transaction if you develop apps for for online transaction of course you need to ensure that it's a secure enough and then uh, not any anybody cannot hack that that uh, transaction online when doing it through mobile apps that's i would see the in the, the 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 impact of mobile apps to the development of software engineering mm. Mm. 
Okay, uh, we will take a small break and after this, we are going to take a look on the suggestion for the future development of software engineering. So stay around on our radio OUM. We are back again and now you are still tuning to IT Hour with our topic today, the future of software engineering. Okay, Cik Diaudin, now we already come to our last, last question in our last, last session. session of IT Hour. Yep. Mm. Okay, uh, in your point of view, what are your suggestions about the future development of software engineering in this year? Okay, uh, as I said earlier, if you want to how do you want to see the future is you need to create the future so with the uh, current trends of uh, of uh, IT and also software engineering uh, I would say software engineering will uh, have more integration with the system engineering domain so it close we will uh, I mean uh, integrate with each other and uh, the apps that we are going to develop in the future will have a stronger uh, connection with the user we are taking more and more uh, accountability from the user side we need we need to ensure that our apps are really uh, I mean have a, a user will have a better experience in using the, the software and of course uh, we cannot run away from uh, dependability and security we need I mean the apps will be developed much much faster due to the rapid change in requirements and more and more complex system will be developed in the future with the introduction of cloud for example and also cross platforms um, and uh, other I would say maybe more mobile apps will be developed rather than typical desktop and web apps and also um, other than that I would say uh, maybe those who are not good in programming skills now maybe have a uh, will go back to find a, a job in the uh, in the software engineering uh, related field and um, other than that, uh, maybe uh, we would say the development of software will be on a global approach. No need to be in the same office. We, they will. Uh, we have a team from uh, in the multi site, multi location, and uh, maybe in the in the more distributed context. So uh, last but not least, I would say. Maybe in the future, the computer science graduates or computer science field, software engineering field will, will gain um, much respect, and also will be become will becoming a high competitive sector uh, for those graduate to to join. Uh, that's I would say uh, more or less future of uh, software, software engineering, engineering. Looking at current trends. Okay, uh -huh. okay, Cik Deudin, on behalf of RED OUM, I would like to thank you for willing to share <laughs> your experience and knowledge in our 10th episode yes. of IT mm. Hour. It's my pleasure as well to be part of the session for 10 episodes. Thanks for the for inviting me to be the guest for IT Hour on iRadio. Okay guys, uh, that's all time for this last episode of IT Hour. Okay, I hope you find this 10 episode beneficial and yet informational. Okay, don't forget to tune in to uh, our website. Uh, if you miss our previous episode, just go to rredu.oum.edu.my slash icast. Then you click to Faculty of Information, Technology and Multimedia Communication. Then click to Software Engineering Subject. Till we meet again, I'm Susan Up signing off. Have a good day ahead. Till then, bye-bye. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum.